uh, living organisms exchange energy and substances with external environment. This is called metabolism. In metabolism, we may distinguish two kind of reactions. One kind of these reactions is called anabolism. Anabolism. Anabolism is including the reactions of synthesis of a new complex compounds from simple ones. It needs energy to compose complex new bonds in, in atom, between atoms in the new complex molecules. And catabolism, catabolism is vice versa, the breakdown of a complex molecules to get energy. This energy is used thereafter for anabolism and uh, this uh, catabolism needs enzymes, hormones, which are synthesized in the time course of anabolism. So these two um, kinds of reactions are tied together very, very intensively and one needs another. Uh, we may try to estimate the intensity of metabolism using calories. One calorie is amount of heat that is needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one grade centigrade by one grade centigrade one gram of water so usually we will use kilocalories in our practice because uh, calorie is uh, a very small amount of heat we will use kilocalories to estimate the energy uh, and to calculate the amount of food that we need to supply the organism for its energetic needs okay the two uh, calculate the energy of the different compounds that we use for food we and to estimate the energy output of of an organism we may use we may use the methods which are called calorimetry 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 may be divided into several types okay calorimetry calorimetry may be physical and physiological what is the difference physical calorimetry is used to calculate the energy the heat output when burning different types of food components uh, it doesn't matter how do we break down the, the uh, energetic bounds we may burn or we may oxidize these components in the body the heat output will be the same if we have the same end products of these reactions okay uh, for the physical calorimetry, we used bomb calorimeter. It is um, the uh, special tube which has double walls and water is put inside. We use thermometer and we put certain amount of 
carbohydrates or fats or proteins into this tube and we burn it. So when we burn it, the heat is produced, we know the volume of water, we know the rays of the temperature and we may calculate how many kilocalories or calories is released. So it was estimated that one gram of carbohydrates releases 4.7 kilocalorie of energy. One gram of pr proteins releases 5.3 kilocalorie and one gram of fats releases 9.3 kilocalorie approximately of heat so but physiological value of proteins is less than in physical calorimetry why because in the body the proteins are broken down not to the final end products but to urea and ammonia which still contain some amount of energy in their bounds so physiological value of proteins will be the same as in carbohydrates will be 4.7 kilo, kilocalorie per gram okay it was about the physical calorimetry we may find out the, the energy that is contained in a certain a certain amount of food physiological calorimetry is used to estimate the energy that is released by the living creatures by living organism it may be direct, direct, and indirect. Direct measures the heat directly that is released by the organism. So, for example, we may take a rabbit, put it into a certain chamber, put the water inside uh, the wall of this chamber, use thermometer, the organism will release heat, it will increase the temperature of the water. We may know the volume of water and the temperature of water, the increase of the temperature. And we, we, we may find out how many kilocalories is produced by the organism. This method is not very convenient because we may use special chambers or suits for uh, human humans. So indirect uses gas analysis is based on complete complete or incomplete gas analysis there are two kinds of indirect calorimetry so for complete gas analysis for complete gas analysis we use two gases we use carbon dioxide and oxygen carbon dioxide and oxygen concentration if we will divide the carbon dioxide volume of carbon dioxide that is released by the body by volume of oxygen that is consumed we will have so-called respiratory quotient respiratory quotient indicate indicates what type of food was oxidized by the body so if respiratory quotient is one one then it was carbohydrates carbohydrates that were oxidized it if it is 0 0.8 it was proteins if 0 0.7 we conclude that fats were the substrate for uh, uh, metabolism in the body fats so uh, we may illustrate it by the formula uh, of gluc for carbohydrates glucose plus 6O2 it will be 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus temperature so 6 by 6 we will have 1 so that's why uh, respiratory quotient for carbohydrates 1 and the same thing is for other participants of metabolism so then next step to calculate the energy uh, is uh, to use 
uh, is, is um, uh, we, do we need the so-called uh, caloric equivalent of oxygen caloric equivalent of oxygen shows how uh, many kilocalories is released when da -da! one liter of oxygen is uh, consumed is consumed через 10 минут освобождать 10-15 when one liter of oxygen is consumed so what do we need in this case is we should multiply the volume of oxygen that is uh, consumed by the body uh, by caloric equivalent of oxygen caloric equivalent of oxygen depends on what type of food was consumed by the body for example for carbohydrates caloric equivalent of oxygen will be 5.05 kilocalories per liter of oxygen so we simply multiply co by volume of oxygen and we will have the energy output of the body so it is quite convenient for incomplete gas analysis uh, we do not use carbon dioxide so we simply know only the volume of oxygen that is consumed we do not know what kind of food was consumed by the body in this case what should we do we should use the average caloric equivalent of oxygen for mixed diet for a mixed diet cal uh, average caloric equivalent of oxygen is 4.85 kilocalories kilocalories per liter of oxygen so we use this and we will have the energy output it is not so precise as uh, incomplete for f as, as complete gas analysis but still it, it works well okay so we were speaking about calorimetry physiological and physical and now we will sp sp speak about uh, how this energy is spent by the body so the total metabolism which in which is including all uh, exchange of energy between body and environment total metabolism it consists of several uh, several components total metabolism will be including so-called basal metabolic rate BMR plus working surplus so let's speak about basal metabolic rate first. So basal metabolic rate is the minimal amount of energy that is needed to support vital functions of the body. Activity of the heart, kidneys, respiration at a very moderate, very uh, small rate. Uh, okay, uh, minimal amount of energy. You should know the conditions that the body should be placed in to measure BMR. These conditions are following. So the body should be uh, in a resting horizontal position, but not sleeping. Person should not sleep. The temperature should be comfortable, about uh, maybe... 20 23 grade centigrade emotional comfort no stress then uh, slimming uh, 8 12 hours food should be excluded and the last proteins should be excluded for three days before examination three days before examination uh, then what we will measure will uh, be BMR. What factors will influence BMR? So first factor is sex. In males it's higher. Second, it is age. Uh, with the age BMR will decline. So in uh, newborn children uh, BMR is very intensive. And three, uh, weight and height of the body. So the more 
is surface of the body, the more intensive is BMR. So mass and height of the body. Uh, also, BMR will uh, increase after uh, the increase in s of some hormones like T3 and T4 and cortisol, they will increase BMR. Okay, now working surplus. This uh, additional uh, factor will be uh, um, ex explained by the type of activity of work that is performed by the organism. For example, if a person uh, is doing predominantly mental, uh, performing mental activity, then uh, this working surplus is not, is not uh, uh, very high. But physical activity, physical work, increases its, the um, total metabolism very, very intensively. Uh, it may be several times two or even three times more than BMR working surplus may be may exceed BMR uh, three times for example in minors in people who work physically very heavy very intensively uh, and all people can be divided into groups in accordance with working surplus in accordance with type of work that they perform so we can we may estimate the energy output total metabolism of the body and we may uh, find what uh, amount of food should be used to, uh, to satisfy the energetic needs of the body. So uh, we may uh, correspond one parameter to another. Okay, and now uh, we may also say a pair of words about the food. So the ratio between uh, um, proteins, lipids, fats, and carbohydrates should be approximately one, two, four. Uh, and uh, if a person works physically intensively, then uh, carbohydrates may be five. Uh, but uh, also uh, it should be well balanced and uh, the ratio should uh, include vitamins, uh, different uh, micro elements, uh, cellulose to feed microflora and to stimulate the peristalsis. And uh, it is important uh, and it is uh, the subject of dietology.